NHK World TV from Japan. NHK World TV from Japan. Welcome back to Newsline. I'm Yuko Aotani in Tokyo. First, the headlines at this hour. The Republicans deal the U.S. president a big blow in the midterm elections. Our Washington correspondent shares his analysis on how Obama can lead the country after his party's loss. A British-built Ebola treatment facility has opened in Sierra Leone, just as health authorities voice concern about a spike in cases in the country. And the famed Chinese movie director has left a powerful message for audiences in the last film he ever made. The U.S. midterm election results have transformed the political dynamic in Washington. Republicans have won a majority in the Senate. They now have control of both chambers of Congress for the first time in eight years. Voters cast ballots for 36 of the Senate's 100 seats. Republicans will hold a majority of at least 52. But a runoff in Louisiana means the final count won't be known until next month. All 435 seats in the House of Representatives were also being contested. The Republicans expanded their majority and now have 243 seats. Well, the results of the elections is a slap in the face for President Barack Obama. Republicans criticized him during the campaign for his handling of the Islamic State uprising and the Ebola outbreak. He told voters he got their message. Now, obviously, Republicans had a good night, and they deserve credit for running good campaigns. And I'm eager to work with the new Congress to make the next two years as productive as possible. I'm committed to making sure that I measure ideas not by whether they are from Democrats or Republicans, but whether they work for the American people. Obama says he wants to continue discussing the international response to Islamic State and the global effort to contain Ebola. And he says he wants to start talks on the federal budget, which expires in mid-December. But talks haven't often led to results in this divisive era of U.S. politics. NHK's Washington correspondent Junpei Yoshioka joined us earlier. He spoke about how Obama will navigate what will likely be a difficult end to his term. The next two years won't be easy. President Obama says he's eager to work with Congress. And the new Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell echoed that sentiment. But McConnell warned he would work to pass bills Obama won't like. And Obama noted he may be forced to use his veto power. He also said he would use his executive authority to push forward immigration reform. All of this means that the period of fiercely partisan politics in Washington may continue. Although McConnell says he won't allow a government shutdown to happen as it did last year. Throughout the campaign, many voters told me how frustrated they are with the dysfunctional Congress. If Republicans and Democrats fail to work together, that frustration will only grow. When it comes to Japan-U.S. relations, officials of both governments say their status as ally won't change. A representative of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party, Katsuyuki Kawaii, met on Wednesday at the White House with Ivan Medeiros, the senior director for Asian affairs on the National Security Council. Medeiros assured Kawaii the election result will not affect the Japan-U.S. alliance. One expert I spoke to says having the Republicans in control of Congress may have a positive impact on issues involving Japan. For example, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The TPP is a proposed free trade agreement involving a dozen of Asia-Pacific nations. The negotiations have not made much progress, in part because a significant number of Democrats want to protect the U.S. market. Here's what Thomas Mann at the Brookings Institution says. If the president's trade negotiating authority, the so-called fast-track procedure, would be 
reauthorized. If the Republicans decide to do that, and in principle they believe in it, but if they do it, I think that would uh, increase the likelihood of uh, 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 the TPP. On the other hand, observers say the Republicans may demand a higher level of free trade in the TPP negotiations, such as the total elimination of tariffs. Japan would be against that, as would some Asian nations. That was our Washington correspondent, Jinpei Yoshioka. Now, President Obama has sent his first request to Congress following the midterm election. He's asked for a multi-billion dollar package to fight Ebola in West Africa and prepare for it at home. It's part of a sustained global effort in the face of an outbreak that remains a challenge, especially in one nation. NHK World's Craig Dale reports. The beds are clean, the healthcare teams ready to receive patients. This British-built Ebola treatment facility just opened in Sierra Leone. Locals, aid workers, British troops and Cuban doctors have come together to staff it. If it's a proper international effort, we need more of it. And if we do, we can get ahead of this disease and thereby defeat it. More of the concern about the outbreak has shifted to Sierra Leone. World Health Organization officials say there have been 435 new cases in the country in the past week alone, bringing the total to more than 4,700. They say the disease appears to be leveling off in Liberia and remains stable in Guinea. Ebola has killed more than 4,800 people in the three West African countries. It's a daily threat. People watch family and friends die and crews in protective gear arrive to collect and bury bodies. It's a very difficult job. Very difficult job. Stopping the disease is also continuing to prove difficult, and that's spurring further international action. U.S. President Barack Obama has asked Congress for more than $6 billion to deal with the outbreak in West Africa and to increase preparedness at home. A Dutch Navy ship is bringing a mobile hospital and other supplies from Europe to the region. And even though China is preparing to send a second medical team to Sierra Leone, and Japan has offered tens of millions of dollars in assistance, the head of the World Bank says the Asian effort has fallen short. I call on countries across Asia to offer trained health workers now to help stop Ebola at its source. Stopping Ebola will be easier once a vaccine is in place. WHO officials say 10 are in development, with some being tested on volunteers. The sooner we have a vaccine, the, the better and the more lives we can save. The WHO says at least two vaccines could be ready for mid to late stage testing in December or January. Few people would welcome that more than those on the front lines of this crisis. We're in a race against time to make sure that we can prevent it spreading, but also to treat people who have got Ebola. It's a race that has seen some successes, but many more failures. Craig Dale, NHK World. A senior Russian lawmaker has criticized Japan for imposing sanctions in response to the crisis in Ukraine. Sergei Narishkin made the comment ahead of a meeting between the Russian and Japanese leaders. Narishkin is the Speaker of Russia's lower house and an aide to President Vladimir Putin. Putin and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe are scheduled to meet next week in Beijing during the APEC summit.